to the singles, we speak to the married, we speak to the grandmas and grandpas, and we also speak to everyone, especially on marriage-related issues. You know, I always tell somebody, and one of our fathers in faith also said it, that if you miss it in the point of marriage, half of your destiny is lost. If you miss it at the point of marriage, half of your destiny is lost. Great men of God like Apostle Ayo Daily Babola could not last in ministry because he had challenge in his home. We were told in history, church history, that the man so anointed, but whenever he came home, he came to fight war. And the man had to die untimely because the, his marriage, his airport, was not a palatable place for him. Marriage is a good thing, though, it's a gift of God. But one of the reasons why a lot of people don't succeed at marriage, don't enjoy in marriage, is because they don't get the principles right. You know, when you buy a product, there was a day this phone was given to me by one of us. It's a Samsung phone. And when it came with the phone, a manual came with it. Now, most times we don't read manuals. That's why we mismanage products. Most of the times, children of God don't pay attention to biblical principles of for guiding marriage. That's why they do enjoy marriage. Let's be on our feet as we read together the first scripture. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6. That's the first scripture we are reading. And we are going to stand up to read it in honor of God's word. Everybody be on your feet. There is only one thing in life that God honors above his name. And what is that? His word. He says, I honor my word. Far above my name. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. I was preaching at the Elebu church this morning. And I was telling them an experience I had last night. You know. While they put the scripture on screen. Remain standing. Last night we didn't have water at home. Because uh, we did washing. And the water in the tank got finished. We wanted to pump. There was no water in the well. So I was thinking how do we get water? What do we do? And I was asking around. All the houses that had borehole, their borehole too dried up. That's a challenge Elebu has. Borehole doesn't, uh, 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 doesn't last during uh, dry season. So I was thinking, what do we do? So while I sat down at home, I was thinking, Lord, how do we take our baths tomorrow morning? How are we going to do things? How will the school function on, mon on Monday morning? I was telling my wife that some children, they are anointed to come and poo in school. Once they get to school, they go to the toilet. After like two hours, they go to the toilet. If I had to ask one child one day, Chuffy, toilet is shielding. <laughs> you know, because he's always at the toilet. So I was thinking, Lord, and I started praying. Lord, look at this weather. It looks as if there's going to be rain. I pray, Lord, let there be rain. Let the rain fall. At least when the rain fall, the uh, well, we have water. The machine, we have something to pump. And instantly I had God said, stop teaching me what to do. That, that's what so many children of God do. They use their prayer to try to teach God what to do. Now you are praying that let there be rain for water to be in the well. Can there not be water in the well without rain? I had God clearly. And I said, Lord, I'm sorry. He said, son, have you forgotten that Elisha said, you won't see the wind. You won't see the rain. But the ditches, the earth will be full of water. He said, so... Tell my children, teach them from this your experience and encounter. Most times they use their prayer to try to tell me what to do. Imagine you are telling God, Father, if you can do it for me this year, Lord, and you said to my case this year, you know, do you know that so many people will give their life to Christ because of this testimony? He says, see, if you want something, tell me. I know how to do it. I said, Lord, okay, I'm sorry. I now said, Lord, Lord, let there be water for me to pump in the well. He said, you are still teaching me what to do. Ask for water. I know what to do. So I prayed. I said, oh Lord, I need water tomorrow morning. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. There was not a drop in our house. So I woke up in the morning, this morning, went straight to the wall, well, opened it to see if there would be something to pump. I was shocked. Beloved, there was no rain last night. It, it was, there was sign of rain, but no rain. I look at the well. There was something to pump. I told my wife, turn on the pumping machine. And she was pumping. What I was going, he said, look at, ah, honey, this thing is, is rushing. I said, if I don't know. But I didn't tell her the experience, but I shared it at a level. Maybe you are there too. You are teaching God what to do. Oh, Lord, if you can bless, make this visa to, be, to come to pass. You know I'll be paying tight in church. 
then that uh, God's house project thing that we are gathering, I can just send 20 million to pastor, they will buy land. Don't teach God what to do. Unto ban fellow wa lo ulua for min visa. Unto ban fellow wa jwa lo niko bili. Some of you are standing in front of God. You are saying, oh Lord, do you know that if I get a job, I'll be able to take care of my parents. If you have a job, I'll pay my tithe. The church too, we have filled in. But listen, must you have a job before you, you take care of your parents? You just tell God, Father, bless me. Do what you want to do in my life. You know, I, it was a powerful encounter I had with God last night. And I saw the proof this morning. Let me give you a privilege now. What do you want God to do? In your life, in one minute before we take the scripture, open your mouth and begin to pray. If what you want is healing, just tell the Lord, Father, heal me. If what you want is a miracle, Lord, in this aspect of my life, I need a miracle. Whatsoever you want, begin to tell him. Now, don't teach God what to do. Stop trying to say, hey, God, you see, if you make this thing a reality. No, God doesn't want us to teach him. He is God. He is our teacher. He is the one to teach us how to prosper. Now, begin to pray. Ask God what he wants and be specific about it. This is what I trust you for, Lord. We have two more seconds to do that. One, two. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and amen. May the Lord grant you answers to your request in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, can we read together Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6? Do we have it on screen? After the count of three, once it's on screen, we read. Thank you. One, two, and three. Let's go. My people are destroyed. For lack of knowledge. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee. That thou shalt... Okay, be praised. Seeing that thou art forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. Let's take only the first phrase. It says, for my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Who is speaking here? God. Now, be seated. God bless you. Do you, can you now see that God's people will suffer destruction for one thing? And what is that? Lack of knowledge. Now, let me quickly announce this to you too. In the month of March, make sure you are in church. In all the first services, and um, both here and a level, I'll be teaching you on demonic strategy to destroy your life. Make sure you are in church throughout the month of March. In the second services, we are going to be taking, continue with our teaching on temptation. You know, God is showing me some things from some experience. I handled the case a few days ago, and God was speaking to me. Now, God was speaking to me very powerfully. And what did God tell me? Somebody was telling me, he said, a prophet told her that her mom is a witch. And she said, I have seen my mom last eight years ago, sir. Sir, please don't encourage my husband to take my children to go and greet my mom. And while I got home, Lord, God says, son, that's a demonic strategy to destroy her. Because the Bible says, honor your father and your mother that your days may be long. I now said, Lord, what if the woman is actually a witch? He said, what my people should ask for is wisdom to practice the word of God without being hurt. Do you know you can honor your father and your mother is a, that is a witch it, with the wisdom of God and not be hurt? Do you understand? Make yourself available in church. And God told me, he said, son, she ran away from her mom for eight years. There was a witch needs a physical address to know where you are living. They don't need map. They don't need GPS. Or, what do you call that thing? A genlier. Overload if you address your Facebook. One more bit on bay. Networking me. I dare to go in and network. I dare to message it to me. I dare to match it. So I dare to do match. Praise the Lord. So the message of today, uh, I want to enlighten you. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Several marriages are destroyed today because God's children lack knowledge. My message title is this. Seven things that will make your communication great as a couple. Seven things that will make your communication great as a couple. Last month, I taught us that when marriage begins to have crisis, the first sign is that there will be lack of communication. Or, I also said the second one, bad communication. 
two signs will show when there is crisis in marriage. Lack of communication or bad communication. You will see that when we say lack of communication, the couple will no longer be talking friends. They will not be talking again. They will be talking to themselves either parabolically or like strangers. Your food is in the sitting room. I've put money on the bed. You know, things like if there's a third party in the house, go and tell your sister. Go and tell your mommy. They are no longer talking partners. They are no longer friends. It's a clear sign that the marriage is breaking. Now, bad communication is you begin to use bad language to address yourself. You know, you talk to yourself anyhow. Now that we now know that communication is the life wire of every marriage, every home. You know, every couple should understand that what makes marriage to, to be strong is good communication. You relate with yourselves well. Let's look at the seven things you need to do frequently to make your communication strong. Let's rush it because of time. Number one, create enough time for talking together. Now, every couple should understand that the first thing that makes your communication strong is that you must create enough time for talking. Create enough time. Now, listen, don't be too busy to the point that you come back home, the next thing you say, eat your food, and you go to bed. No, 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 no. A marriage where there is no talking, their communication will not grow. In fact, you should understand that the more often you talk with yourself, the more deeper you understand yourself. That's why I always tell young people most times that it is not good as a young lady to go and marry your father's mate. I always tell young people, because if that person is not in your talking class, there is no how you will fit. Hello? If that person is not in your talking class, You'll be shocked. You'll be talking A, the person will be understanding B. That's why if you miss it in the point of choosing, you might have problem. Now, this is you, a graduate, blessed, well-read. And because in your town, you used to go and marry from your village. They went to pick one girl from the village who didn't go through school at all, who don't have understanding at all. Now, to come marry you because you want to fulfill your parents' wish. What do you think will happen? Communication will lack at that, in that marriage. Because when you are talking high, the person does not understand. It's just like as you are now, you are attending uh, Reverend Chris Okotie's church. No matter the kind of revelation you are is preaching, you can't understand. Because Reverend Chris or Yaki, uh, 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 what's his name? Okotie preaches with uh, high English. You, they go to his church with Bible and dictionary. He will tell you that the topic of my message is apocalypse. So while you are busy looking for apocalypse, he has spoken another one. So young people get it right. If you are married already, no divorce. You must develop and create time for talking. When you close from work, make sure that you plan your way in such a way that at least there should be one hour talking together before you go to bed. Even God himself in Genesis you will see that the Bible says in chapter 3, God came to visit man as he usually comes to do it. God has a usual visit to man. Man and God always talk together. See I hear. I wrote here, this is why I am not always 10% in support of marrying somebody with a very wide age difference. You marry your talking mate. This is for the youth. You marry your talking mate. And if you are married... Cultivate a talking spirit. I will tell you how as we go deeper. Create time. Stop saying I'm tired. In fact, for it to work, it requires a lot of sacrifice. Look at the woman God gave man. And let's look at how the Bible addressed her. Genesis, uh, Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Let's look at the message Bible. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Look at what God said about the woman God gave to Adam. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 18. Let's put it on screen. From the message. It says, God said, it's not good for the man to be alone. What will I do? I will make, I will make him a helper, what? A helper, a companion. Who is a companion? A partner. Not his father. I won't give him his mother. I will give him his partner. A companion. Some other versions will say, 
a help meet suitable for him. That's why the first thing in making your communication to be strong is that you must create enough time for discussion. I wrote here, we discover from experience that couples who do, who do not create time for talking are liable to experience divorce. They, most of them go find out. If you sit down with couples who divorce the marriage, you find out that they are talking, a uh, 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 relationship had stopped long before. If you don't create time to talk with yourself, the serpent will talk with your spouse. If you don't create time to talk with yourselves, the serpent will talk to your spouse. Because Adam was absent, the serpent came in and started talking with Eve. And eventually, it led to God driving them out of the garden. So there must be enough time. Tell your neighbor, there must be enough time. And most times, so many of us, we say there is no time. Pastor, you don't know how busy I am. Listen, whatsoever you love, you create time for. Love is the foundation. If you don't love something, you won't create time for it. How do you create time to watch man you are Nasna? Man, how do you create time for that? You'll be shocked. you see some men, 11 p.m., they are still watching the match. And you say you can't stand up till 11 p.m. to talk with your spouse. You are selfish. If you can watch, what will they pay you for that match that you are going to watch? Are you going to collect one? No, you only have this inner satisfaction that, yes, my team did so well. I love the way they played. But this one is your marriage. This is your marriage. I have one of us that is into politics, deep into politics. At times when I call him, he says, sir, we are in a meeting, 11.30 p.m. They are still in the meeting. Why? Because he loves politics. If you can give such time to politics, you should give much time like that to your wife. Hello? I give time to God for prayers. I create time to pray. Why will I not create time for my wife? We are to walk, walk the same walk of destiny together. This is my partner in the work of destiny. So for communication to be strong, for your communication to become great, what's number one again? Create enough time to, for talking together. Let's take number two because of time. Praise the Lord. Number two, be committed to listening to each other. Listen with your eyes. People don't know that listening is a great uh, 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 quality that makes marriage work. You listen. You listen and you listen with your eyes. Most times what people are looking for is people that can listen to them. And in marriage, uh, can I tell you the truth? I took time to, to analyze marriage. What does a man need in marriage? What does a man need in marriage? I took time. I sat down. I've been married 21 years. What does a man need in marriage? I'm telling you, the major thing a man needs in marriage is help. That's why a man, he needs a woman that will give him peace. Ah, you don't understand. If a man has war at home, Yoruba even said it. Oh, you don't understand Yoruba. That if the house home is not sweet, the, the, the town will look like forest. A bank manager of a bank in Nigeria here went to park at an at a, uh, event center, the one at Ring Road. What's the name of this one at Ring Road? Math 21. He was there to 12 midnight. The manager wanted to close the bar. This man didn't take a call. What was he taking? One bottle of malt. They said he came in around 7 and he didn't finish one bottle of malt till to 12. The manager wanted to close. The man now said, please, sir. Please, sir. Can I sleep in this, my car, till tomorrow? Ah, the manager said, what happened? He said, it's my wife. She doesn't seem to understand that I don't have a girlfriend. And I'm afraid to go home. If I go home, it's war. You know why the man is afraid? The woman does not want to listen. Listen. What does it mean to listen? Open your heart and pay attention to what that person has to say. What he has to say by word, with his words, and what he has to say even by body language. That person wants to say something. Your communication cannot be strong if you do not create time to listen. If a listening cannot be too much. You listen and listen and listen. I wrote here, I research, I made, uh, some scientists made. Researchers say an average woman speaks about 25,000 words a day. 
Now, that's what scientists say. That an average woman speaks how many words? 25. When they say an average woman, it's not, they don't use, they use above it all, but averagely, Orotio, Beniman, Solujumo, Batoni, Kokka, they count 25,000 words. The scientists now also made research, they discovered that an average man speaks 10,000 words a day. Look at the difference. The woman speaks more than the man by 15,000 words. <laughs> oh God. So any man that is not ready to open his ears is not ready to have a, a peaceful home. Any man that is not ready to listen cannot have peaceful marriage. The woman is different from the man. That's why I always encourage every married man to go and read this book. Men are from Mars, women are from Venus. Go and read it. If you have not read that book, you may not understand who your wife is. Now, men talk logically, but women talk emotionally. That's why if they want to talk, they want to say one thing. Mommy just tell you, stand up now, right now. You see, and the church la roll out, and the church la roll out, I shot my lord, you could you. To be never my lord church into my prepared you are sure. You don't understand what I'm saying. I was preaching in church this morning. I my my phone rang. I told somebody to come and pick it. You know what? On here, you're the batting by my mash with a cash to move away to me. Go, eh, moket to cruel living. A woman is different from a man. Now, and science has proved it. Now, if a woman speaks 25,000, you have to listen. Listening is one of the powers that makes leaders leaders. Can I tell you the truth? That's what makes leaders leaders. And that's a problem we even have in our nation. We don't have listening leaders. Try here. Even if she's speaking rubbish, even if the man is too logical in his speaking, listen. Hmm. So for communication to be good, listen, couples should learn to listen to each other. If you don't listen to your spouse, hear me, I'm saying this again, the devil will plant his agents and these agents will be ready to listen. These agents will be ready to listen. Go back and read Genesis chapter 3. There's no time. They can't show us. You will see that the devil had time to listen to Eve. The devil said, God knows that if you eat this tree, you will be like, you will die. You will be, you, no, no. The, the woman said, God said, if we eat this tree, we are going to die. Serpent was ready to listen and he said, ah, woman, you won't die. You won't die. God knows that if you listen, if you eat this fruit, you will be like God. You will be like God. Can you see? He was able to listen enough to know where to get the woman. And this problem is mostly the problem of men in Africa. Now tell me the man who doesn't do it. Even me, I do it. But when I began to re research, okay, ask them at home, I will now keep quiet. But they know when I disconnect too. Hmm. Hmm. They say, eh, on here, bon continue on some. Okay, okay, oh yeah, oh yeah. That's why you must listen with your eyes. Not only with your ears. Give them attention. Most times when you listen to your spouse, hear me, you know how to relate well with them. For, for your communication to be strong, you need to create time to listen. If you don't listen to your spouse, like I said, the devil plants his agents. The devil plants his agents. I wrote one case here. I don't want to mention their name. The case of Susu and so. The wife was too busy to listen to her husband. Look up here. This man works in a government parastata in Nigeria. They were members of our church. The woman was a member of our church. The man doesn't come to our church. The woman was a strong member of our church. In fact, she was in charge of our intercessory department. Ah, this woman can praise her. From 3 p.m. to 3 a.m. And one time she came and said, Papa, Papa, Pastor, and she would be mentioned, Pastor, 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 
But the husband will come home from work. Where is my wife? She's in church. And I didn't know that our assignment in the church was destroying our home. And I didn't give her the assignment. She's the one that came to say, Ulu Aniki Mag Badu Avuni, Chema Lulu Ako. But you can come to Ulu Aniki Kri, Ulu Anika Mashi. He said, when the whole family scattered, the family scattered. As I'm talking to you, with, they have five children, they've gone separate ways. The man is married to somebody else, the woman is married to somebody else, and they have a serious problem now. I sat down with the man and the woman. I gathered them together, tried to settle them. The man said, I told my wife, why will I come from work and I can't find the dinner? Kinima Jelale, Yahweh one church, Uluwa, Pasta, Fala, B, Uluwa, Che, Uluwa. And funny enough, her business, she sells snacks. She says she will have to leave home around 5.30 a.m. in the morning to go and soak flour for it to rise to fry pop off. So the man doesn't take dinner and breakfast. But do you know what? A lady in the office listened to the man. The lady noticed, Mr. So so and so. Mu notice, Tebati de A man door. The the lady started bringing food for, to the man. He eventually married her. When we will hear it, ah, the responsible. They are outside there. Do you know that the, that lady listen when we, we by the time I heard that they were mis, they were having misunderstanding, I had to come into the matter. The man told me, Pastor, I'm sorry. It's late. Obiri, look back, me nigga ojo. She ever fucking lay back, me ole leo. Create time to listen to the body language of your husband. What is he saying? Create time to listen to the body language of your wife. What is she saying? Kodi bato bato la nukoto soro. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you create more time for to listen to listen. Number three, I'm rushing because of time. We have to get to the whole seven. What's the third thing that makes your communication great in marriage? Express and oppose ideas lovingly. Express and oppose ideas lovingly. You know why I have to say this? I have to say this because, hear me, in communication, you cannot always be right. Some of you cannot stand it if your spouse oppose your idea. Ah, 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 ah. I said it, you didn't agree. I said it, you didn't. You now begin to bewitch. You begin to pray that something should happen that will make him or her to say, eh, hey, did I not say it? That will make them fail so that you can say you said no. And you two that want to oppose the idea, you must understand this. Now, let's, let's take it one after the other. How do you express an idea in marriage? You have an idea, you want to express it. You have an idea, you want to express this. You didn't like how she, she cooked the soup, but the thing was full of salt and pepper. And this is your wife just sweating to come me, to come out of the kitchen. You know you want to show us you want to Yes. No, 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 no. You can, you, you should look for loving way to express opinion. At least swallow that one. Take two cups of water. Give me another water, please. Ah, 
Let her be the one to say, Kilo shele ten mo mi bai. And the ah obey to bo mi mo kotu shele mi mo be ahan mi lo boni abi. I don't know the one. Maybe it is my tongue or I don't know. Then let her be the one to say, ah we are ah we are mo de she mistake or thirty mo fiye. We will say ah. Then be one mo kotu shele we ahan mi ni yo like ahan mi ni. Express there, there are loving ways to express, and the person will accept your expression. The reason why there is major crisis in marriage, listen, is people don't express well. You met your husband Monday morning, he's playing video game. The next thing you come out of the room, say, Muti and he say, Feli or Niese, he war. You will kill him, or he might even provoke you. You provoke him, he stand up and start punching you. But you, you, meet him, you met him with uh, is it PS4. Monday morning. You come and look at the TV, PS4, alone win. Ah, honey. I just can't pray or share in. Call on to me. She put it set to. Call on share in. Set to. And let's pray together. Let's pray, honey. Let's pray. You've passed the message. Not that I want to call you. You're going to be a PS4. You're going to be a PS4. You're going to be a PS4. What, is, what does the book of Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1 says? Proverbs chapter 15 verse 1. Put it on screen. Let's all see it. These things are, are they biblical? Proverbs 15 verse 1. It says what? A gentle response. Let the scripture be clear. The, the, the thing is shaking. A gentle response dis, diffuses anger. But a sharp tongue kindles a temper. It diffuses. It means, you know what it diffuses? Is to make it not to be effective. The, the person will no longer be angry. You see a bomb that is around, about to, to explode. You can diffuse it. How do you diffuse a bomb? Change to answer. Some of you have points, but you don't know how to talk. You have good points, oh, but your presentation is bad. That's why your husband will beat you. And that's why at times some men will say, shut up. To my mom, who is going to be a or to the first point in it, but both she be kale look bad. To my uncle Nick on the two first, Ben Wedaka, but so my poor Moroso, Mamma Bamisoro. Am I talking to somebody this morning? You are not answering me now. For communication to be strong, don't forget number three, express and oppose ideas lovingly. It is not possible for you to always think. Uh, sorry, to always think the same way. Where am I? Where am I? Where? Am I? It is impossible for you to always think the same way, but it should be done lovingly. Yes. What do I mean by this? You know, some of you think that you must always agree. You can't always think the same way. But when you don't think the same way, how do you oppose it? You oppose it lovingly. Let's think of this way. I want to say it. You have an idea on how you feel things should be done. Express it lovingly. Express it lovingly. Express it lovingly. You feel irritated about something. Express it lovingly. Even when you want to oppose an idea, do it lovingly. Understand that we can't reason at the same way. We can't accept truth the same way. God taught me this many years ago. That time we were, we were just married. We were still scolding and I was going home. I, we need to pass through that NTC road. And there's this point where they do gari. Some people do fufu. You see some peeling cassava. Some will soak it. You know, and I see some frying gari. Some doing fufu. And God said to me, son, the man that is eating fufu, the man that is drinking Gary, the man that is eating the Gary, are they not eating the same cassava? And the man that cooked cassava raw, is it not the same cassava they are eating? It's the same, but processed in different ways. Me, I cannot, you cannot cook cassava for me now, I will eat it. Me, I I can't eat it. 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 Tani Birangbi, do you have any Bira here? Kogi State. Nobody from Kogi in our mix. Is it Awusa that is? 
Rogo. Okay, Aousa calls it Rogo. Do you have any Aousa here? You eat it. Aha, confirmation. But me, I can't eat it. Can you eat it, sir? But you eat Eba. You eat Fufu. Can you see that? God now said to me, son, there are ways we, we process truths. Some people will eat the cassava raw. Some people will eat cassava in gari form. Some will eat it in fufu form. But what are they eating? Cassava. Ma? There's a species they eat raw cassava, not even cooked. Can you see? So the way we can accept truth, if I say to somebody, get out, he understands. If I say to somebody, get out, he will misunderstand me. You feel offended. So understand that you can't oppose or present an idea without love. Say I hear. Let's go to number four. Are you learning something at all? Number four. Agree not to have personal secrets. Ah, this one is very important. If you want your communication to be strong, agree not to have personal secrets. Avoid anything you know you won't have confidence to tell your spouse. Hi, Shagad, about saying delay. This one I've destroyed several homes that I've tried to come into mend that was not mendable. Don't have personal secrets. Don't maintain a relationship with an opposite sex, even if the relationship is pure that you know your spouse does not know about. Are you getting what I'm saying? Anything you know that, ah, if my husband should hear this, if my wife should hear this, she will feel offended. You know your spouse. Avoid it. Because the Bible says there's nothing that is a secret that will not be exposed. <laughs> there is no hidden secret that will not come out one day. So don't go a place you know that if your spouse eventually know that you, you went, you will be offended. Don't do it. Don't keep personal secrets from your spouse. Because once your spouse eventually find out, it will destroy or affect your communication. Let's go to number five. I love this number five very well. What's this number five? Don't use feelings to respond to facts. Don't use feelings to respond to facts. Now, what does that mean? What does it mean to use feelings to respond to facts? Your spouse tell you the truth and you are crying in response. Uh, imagine your spouse is telling you, uh, uh, my wife, it's not that I don't love you. I love you. But why will you, why will you cook and eat alone without thinking of me? And you're saying, uh, uh, you are crying. Crying for what? No, crying for what? He has just told you a fact. Your spouse woke you up in the morning and say, honey, honey, or sweetie, or whatever he calls you, you know, and he said, I love you so well, I love you so much, but I don't know you have problem with your mouth. When you wake up in the morning, there's this odor that comes out of your mouth, and the next thing, ah, I show me, I know me, if you love me, you love me with the smell of my mouth. No. If you are doing that, you are using feelings to respond to facts. Your spouse can tell you as a wife, can tell you as a husband, honey, you are trying. But see, see, you have to do more. Look at our father in the Lord. He's a pastor. He has poultry. He, you will see him in the school working as a proprietor. Look at his wife. Hard working. Honey, this one you wake up by 8. You are with your phone till 10. You go to the computer from 10 to 11. At the end of the day, we still drink Gary. Sir, I don't understand why we are going to sleep Late, wake up early and see the bread of sorrow. According to the Psalm 127, only what is happening and nursing, me, me, which means you regret that you marry me. That's using feelings to respond to fact. If you use feelings to respond to fact, see, your spouse will not want to express themselves again. It will now get to a point they will begin to pretend to love you. Start here. Respond Fact to fact. We like Bushman Binu. Any small thing, pra Utibinu. Any small thing, pra Utibinu. Ah, Okutiva Pami. Ah, Kuku Pami, Momo Pove Pami, Marco Jadi. You are using feeling to respond to fact. Your husband gave you money to go to the market. He told you, this is my salary. My salary is 50,000 naira. He removed house, uh, uh, house rent, maybe 35 in a month. Remove um, Nepa bill, 2 5 in a month. Calculate that with me. That's how much. 
Sir? 6,000. How much do we have left? 44,000. And it counts 25,000. Go to the market. And you went to the market with 25,000. You are just two of you. You don't yet have a child at home. We are trusting that a child will come. And you went to the market. You bought one big milo. One big pow dino powdered milk. You now brought small gari. You brought small rice. And one spaghetti. Two uh, is it pieces you call egg? Two pieces of egg. You can't expect him to rub his hand on your head now. He will call you Paulina. What thing happen? <laughs> now milk we won't drink throughout this month. Uh -uh. Didn't you think? And the next you begin to cry. Ah, you don't love me. You know that I like me, Camilo. You know that I love me, Camilo. You don't love me. That's, you are using feeling to respond to fact. The man comes and he tell you this, my salary is 40,000 and you are telling him that your cream alone is 25,000. That if he doesn't give you, he doesn't love you. And you are crying. If you don't give my cream, money for my cream, you don't love it. Will you really bring 25,000 out of 40,000 naira? Are you not going to eat? You are using feelings to respond to fact. And anytime you are doing that, you are killing the man. The same thing too, as the man too. Don't use feelings to respond to fact. Yes, you want sex. You wake up in the middle of the night, you tap your wife. Honey, oh yeah, let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. Let's do this thing. And your wife tells you, throughout the day I was walking. Before I slept at night, I was taking care of your baby. Please, allow me these two hours, three hours to rest. And you say, ah, you You are using feelings to respond to fact. You say, right now, are you married? <laughs> a lot of African marriage, that's the problem, I'm telling you. A lot of African marriage, problem, we don't, we don't respond facts to facts. We allow our feelings to come in. And every time we allow our feelings to come in, listen, we will kill the other person. That's why you see that when some couples start talking, they end every of their discussion with fight. Because the man is talking about school fees. The woman is talking about my powder is finished. Why are we quiet right now? I wrote here, your spouse lovingly shows you something you should correct. And you begin to cry. This is using feelings to respond to facts. Some may even keep grudge. I know of people like that. I've handled them in, 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 uh, in, uh, in counseling. We had the husband who said, Sir, I will give my wife money to go to the market. My wife will not buy the things we agreed that she should buy. And if I complain, she will start keeping malice. Sir, my wife is living more expensive than we are. If I complain, she will keep malice. And some of you will be holding on. The Bible says, the Bible says, uh, treat your wife as a weaker vessel so that your prayer will not be answered. I mean, he, he may not be hindered. So that your prayer will not be hindered. So if I keep grudge, he will quickly beg me so that my prayers will be answered. You are killing that man. Did you hear me? Is it gender is giving us problem? Then what's giving us problem? There's light. So you, I, is the internet still on? Okay, because people are watching online. So don't do that. Use facts to respond to fact. That's why at times when I talk to people, you say maybe pastor is taking side. I have been married twenty one years. And I'm happily married. This is my wife. These are my children. I've never lifted my hand before to beat my wife. I'm a practical married man. Ask her. We used to agree eh, to achieve so many things together. That I will ask her, how much do you have in your account? She too will ask, how much do I have? We match it together to achieve something. We don't use feelings to respond to facts. Say here. 
You are not talking to me. Talk now. Do better. The same way to listen. You should not use fact to respond to feeling. Let's balance it. Don't use fact to respond to feeling. Your wife woke you up in the morning. Honey, guess what's today? Honey, what's today? Guess now. What's today? So why are you disturbing me as Jesus come? What's today? What's today? What's today? So you could not even remember that today is my birthday. The next thing you said, did I even remember my own? That's wrong. You are using facts to respond to feeling. Hello? Talk to me, hello? At such a time, what should you do? I'm, oh God, I'm sorry. Okay, happy birthday. Not that you will tell her, are you, are you Jesus? Are you Jesus? Do I even remember my birthday? Are you getting what I'm saying? You don't use facts to respond to something you should use feeling for. That okay, and it's true, and it's true. It's a simple thing. I'm sorry, I didn't think of it that way. Hey, yeah, happy birthday. Now, why are we doing these things? We are doing it to improve our communication in marriage. Ah, Shagada Baskende, they say. Okay, let's take the next one, number six. Number six. Take note of this. Always take, sorry, always look for root causes of crisis in your communication. I'll come again. Always look for root causes of crisis in your communication. Somebody is saying, I hear. That's a, but a precious one. I hear. I hear. Hear more. Always look for root causes in your, sorry, always look for the root causes of crisis in your communication, which means whenever you have misunderstanding, listen, don't just settle until you find out the cause of that misunderstanding. Kilo no. Now, some of you, when you have misunderstanding, the next thing, maybe after you have kept malice for like one week, maybe this eighth day, you just jam on the road to the kitchen. Show you mean. You know what I mean? mean. You know what I mean? 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 You know, hey, if you want to notice that if it's a man that's trying to say, she'll say, hey, we're familiar, Jerry. We're familiar, Jerry. The one be kilo and she gone. Kilo and she gone. Kilo and she Kilo and she gone. Kilo and she gone. Hey, we're going to tell you that you're going to tell you. You're going to tell you. You're going to tell you. I should tell you. I should tell you. I should tell you. I should tell you. But see, could that be you? Oh, party low, top, but two of you should sit down. Kilo and she gone. So that it will not repeat itself again. Most times, you know why misunderstanding repeats? Because we don't pay attention to the root causes. Now, and it is what you pay attention to, you can cure. Am I communicating? If you don't pay attention, how will you cure it? It's like somebody is sick, is feeling pain all over his body. He's having a headache and he saying, please give me parastamol. Give me parastamol. Me too, I didn't know all these things. It was later, when I started reading books, I discovered that parastamol does not cure anything. It will only relieve you of the pain, but it does not cure the problem. The cause of the pain is still there. Give me parastamol. My liver almost packed up. Many years ago, I was fasting, I was praying, I was doing programs, and when I come up, my body will be, ah, there will be pain. Please give me parastamol. I'll sleep. Please give me, until one day, I went to ease myself and I saw that my urine was black. Hey, what is this? My wife saw it. She called my mom. My mom said I should wee again. I wee it into the plate, into a bowl. She screamed. Thank God we had a doctor in our church. Dr. Molly, wherever you are, may God bless you more. He came to do a program at UCH from Undo State and he stayed with his junior brother. Oh no, his elder brother. That's Mr. Amon. He works with Tribune. He too is in UK now. And because his senior brother is a member of our church, he was also coming. So we called him. He saw my urine. He said, ah, pastor. He didn't want to mention. He said, we should go and do a hepatitis test. 
while they were doing the test, he said before the test results should come out, something may go wrong. He started his treatment, started treating me. He now told me, he said, Pastor Doctor, Parastamon does not cure anything. It only relieves you of the pain. You know what Parastamon is doing? Look up. You know in, on the vehicle, you have what we call the um, dashboard. Look up, everybody. We have fuel gauge. Abby? We have a temperature gauge. We have an oil gauge and other uh, signs. Now, you now say, ah, what, why is my, the temperature high on, my, on the gauge? You now went to cut the temperature gauge. Does it stop the hotness of the engine? No. One day, the engine will just knock. That's why whenever there's crisis and you want to settle, go back to the root causes. Kilo fa. Kilo diti tashe ja. Kilo shele tashe ni misunderstanding. To a long, to a, to a law for seven days. So that you can cure it. Let's take the last one. The seventh one. Shagada basende. Very important, number seven. Do not be afraid to invite the help of your pastor into your marital issues. Do not be afraid to invite the help of your pastor into your marital issues. This one is common with we Christians. We are so proud. Am I not matured enough to handle my marriage? When you have legal issues, who do you go to? Why are you not afraid to call your lawyer? Can't you defend yourself? You go to court, I mean to your lawyer, to say lawyer, you by me, mumani case. When you have health issues, why are, you, why are you not afraid to call in the doctor? You say, ah, doctor, ejo, uh, please, doctor, can you please come and help me intervene in this? Then why are you always afraid of involving your pastor? I know some of you will be saying, ah, if my pastor should understand, should discover that I have this marriage crisis, he will say, eh, upon all the teachings I've taught you. I always tell our members, hear me, anything you do shows me that, shows me the level of work that I still need to do on you. Ah, Benny, Timbari ato nja ngbo ro nse. Mi o ni binu. Mamo ke ya wiri are o ti son o. Kui son o. Akan ji de lo kuni o. Eje ka ha. Eje ka mu wale. Eje mu wale kwa da. A treat ye. I know some of our brothers that you know committed some little little things. When they do such things. I invite them. Sit them down. Teach them more on areas that they need to work on. Listen. Can I tell you this truth? There are some things, I said it last week too when I was preaching about temptation. There are some things you don't need prayer over that you need counseling on. Counseling on. And okay, I listened to one message. I, I was Pastor Matthew Ashimolo that was sharing that message. He said there was this family in their church. They were always having crisis. They tried to settle the thing they didn't settle. So he said, until one day, and I invited them for another session. He said, his own pattern, it is not the day you come for counseling that he will give you a solution. The day you come for counseling, he tags it, counseling over for hearing your case. He said, he will now give you another day, hearing two, hearing oh two. He said, because he discovered that if you give people quick solution, they don't value it. Then he will now give you another appointment for hearing oh oh three. <laughs> then after hearing you for three times, the fourth one, he will now give you solution 001. Go and try this. He'll give you another appointment to come back to give him feedback over that one. When you now come, he will give you solution 002. He said he now discovered that people started to value it. So he said when this family case came, he now discovered it was a sexual problem. The man wasn't performing and wasn't coming close to his wife. He said he now had one-on-one -on -one counseling with the man. He now discovered that the man was masturbating. The man didn't conquer masturbation as a youth. So when he got married, he didn't have need for a wife. He only tell the wife, you are beautiful, you are beautiful, but he had sex with himself. Do you understand what I'm saying? They now started working on the man. You need some counseling. If you ask some men that are stingy, it's not prayer, it's not devil. It's counseling. Some men has been duped. Me, 
to ye ki nine minutes lo ja sile to wa ye ki iwo to nbo lo wa je ye ise ani aye en to en to nba to ba ko si o lowo nsin oh god eni e ma ri meme so awa wa wa position se iwo wa ko si lowo to ba be the five naira ko si such a man needs to be counseled it's not prayer. Only man, but Uwa, Ugu Eshu, Ugu Eshu, Gon Oriye, Eshu Gon Ma Beka Onunde Mi Mi Oshe. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I tell you the office that children of God abuse most is the office of a pastor, people don't want to go to them. People feel that they can, especially born in Pentecostal in Anglican, it's not like that. In some of these churches, it's not like that. They they appreciate the office of the priest. In the Catholic Church, the priest will be inside a door. I don't know what they call that thing. People go and confess their sins to him. What do they call it? Confession. They say, Okay, what do you want to say? Aha. And once the pastor say, the priest say, you are forgiven. They accept it like that. Is it biblical? Yes, now. Jesus Christ said, whosoever sin you forgive is forgiving. He said it to the disciples. It's biblical. But it's just that most times people confess to the priest and they go back to it. So do not be afraid. A man came to meet us and said, sir, sir, I don't know. My wife, my wife. And he said, please don't let my wife know that I told you. Oh, but see her. I said, if I see her, you want me to lie that the law says? You want me to say, Auntie, sit down. Who are fear me? Pay who are jotty or coin in dying in a low. Natasha, you back that you want all the bedroom. My father's okay. Pass of fear for you, minimum of all. So you just told Wabawa, we got to pass of us, and you can all call me no suffering. Jerry, so we told him categorically if you cannot tell her that you told us, we cannot come in. And we we hands off that case. Do not be ashamed or afraid. To bring your pastor into your marital issues. Are you blessed this morning? Have you learned something? I wrote here to summarize. When you need spiritual help, then go to your pastor. If you follow your pastor's instruction, the same way you follow your lawyer and doctor's instruction, you will get better results. If you follow your pastor, you know, people do, people listen to us, but they don't follow us. But, you dare not listen to your doctor and not follow. You know. If your doctor say every morning, uh, there's one 70 year old man, a professor. He was sick. Mommy Henry, are you here? He was sick. Torture for me. And they took him to UCH. When they got to UCH, when they got to UCH, the doctor did all tests and they told professor, Prof, you know the source of your sickness is drug reaction. He said, eh. Hey. He said, all the sickness that is happening to you now is reaction of drugs. He said, for now, doctor said, for now, don't take any drug again, just be taking water. So this day we met him, the professor was celebrating 70th birthday. He said, doctor, meet us I won't go to Molo. Reaction won't, Leon Shele, see me, Lati Joy. Umi last one, Momo. Tani Paso, Emma, Sofumpe, Beshin, Loyal, Toko, Imba, Soro, Sin, Emma, Sotin, Pada, Dake, Toma, Dake. Imagine, we are so case here from lawyer. Lawyer, man, okay. I used to think they used to say the Lord will take his course. I didn't know that it was the law. Lawyer will now say the law will take his course. The law will take his course. The Lord will take his cause. But about the day court, auntie, Beshima Sonny. I remember Kiloya man called Beshima Rujo. Oh, the Tobek would they court go to Ludi? Over Lewani. But about the Bible, it's a little bit of a bad day. So, I can join sorrow. Me, the monk, or two shelly. Go born again, Jubelo. To bad day. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't 
The other op opposing lawyer will now said, see, but my client said you slapped him. Is it true that you slapped him? He wants to put words into your mouth. The judge will say, answer him. If you don't answer, the judge will say, answer that question. Your lawyer will look at you. What will you say after your lawyer? You follow his counsel now. Did you see? They see my client said you slapped him. Why did you slap him? The next thing you'll be forced to say, I never slapped him. Because your lawyer said so. But why kill a pastor? He gone shake. No, let me. Kill a pastor? He gone shake. Inti inti church o sheti yaya ya wonyo pada niye o. Agbo wa suton adi de abawa agbo so richi afun pastor. If I live like this, my husband will ride me. Okolulu ya yambo kishenu lete me. I always tell all our ministers, follow me. I'm a, I'm a living example of. Practical marriage. I'm a living example of practical marriage. Do what I do and you have the same peace that I have. Let's be on our feet and begin to give thanks to the Lord. Oh, sit down. Sorry, sit down. Give thanks to God over what you have had. Begin to thank the Lord for what you have had again today. Thanks, God. Give thanks to God for what you have had today. We have 10 minutes more. Of... This is the correct one. Pray that God should give you grace to be the doer of the word, not just the hearer. Doer, not a hearer. A doer, not a hearer. A doer, not a hearer. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. I pray that the word you have heard will work for you. Grace to be a doer of it, receive in Jesus' name. You are blessed and favored. In Jesus' name we pray. And amen. Before we go to Thanksgiving.